Welcome back to Ferocious Education, this is Ed. Today, we're bringing another update for PROG, Progenty, and in this one, we're gonna dive a little bit further towards onto the technical analysis, and what we can anticipate was gonna happen in the next few days or so. So with this ticker, I did talk about it before, my last video is in the description below, but they're a biotechnology company innovating in the fields of gastrointestinal health and oral biotherapeutics. They've really seen a price surge yesterday or on Friday, around 18.4% price increase, which is a really good one. In terms of the latest news, the last one we have is still from October 19th, 2021, where they mentioned they're going to be participating in Crohn's and Colitics Foundation 4th Annual IBD Innovate Conference. And this one here is going to be on 18 of November to the 19th of November. So, in terms of institutional buyers, we also still don't see any activity happening here on the 19th. But take a look into Insider Ownership. This company is around 62% owned by Insider, so majority of that is there. And in terms of the short interest ratio, you're able to see that this company has only 0.06 days to cover for the shorts. And in terms of the short volume, you have around 53 million shares going towards the short volume, part of the dark pool yesterday on Friday, around 47% of the total volume. Currently, it shows zero shares availability and a short borrow fee rate that is not available as it's probably already high. I can anticipate above 50%. And in terms of volumes, again, it's skyrocketed and so is the short volumes. We're hitting around 113 million. This hasn't been the case in, since the 19th of October. Uh, so, but the average volumes is multiples than the usual. Uh, to be specific, it's around four times as much. Now, another thing I do want to talk about is the price over sales. This is 882, so it's clearly a momentum kind of play rather than a price over book or evaluations or a fundamentals play. The short entrance as a percentage of the flow is only 8.35%, so it doesn't really suggest a massive short squeeze per se. Uh, it's just not that much significant, especially with around 128.7 million shares floating. In terms of the balance sheets and everything, we've covered that before as we got to see that this again is there's not much of a strong strength into this one, but rather just momentum. The earnings per share is around negative 3.46 per share, of course. So you can able you're able to see that the current price is three dollars and disconnect between that and the fundamentals. So if you're going to play this, play it for momentum and exit before it goes cold. Now, when we're looking into retail volumes itself, we notice that PROG is mentioned a few times. Now, the retail is mainly focused on two things. The short selling as well as partnership with Pfizer, uh, basically details. Like, take a, take a look into this person who just highlighted this one. The USPTO has issued US patents and they're talking about it we're going with the gastrointestinal tract with Janus Kinesi inhibitor. The patent covers method of treating ulcerative colitis using an ingestible device that delivers GAK inhibitor and then they go went back and linked the here uh, moderately to severe actively ulceritis colitis medicines called tumor necroitis factor TNF blocks uh, that did not work well or cannot be treated. Now there's no kind of things where they're spelling it out but these people are in retail currently trying to connect some dots. Another one here is shorts being forced to close positions. We anticipate that with a lot of stocks uh, or the stock itself increasing and people borrowing on margin will be forced to uh, for a certain point and certain uh, sizes account sizes will be forced to close those uh, positions and the main reasons is that the bank or whatever you're using the broker isn't that comfortable lending you that money when the stock has a high volatility so it can technically squeeze for around the eight percent float but again it's not that massive as you anticipate now in terms of other people, some are critical about this one, but the volumes are not so much insane other than really taking a look into the short selling, really trying to anticipate a short selling squeeze, but I don't see this. Let's move on towards technical analysis and talk a little bit more about the momentum itself. Now, from a technical analysis perspective, what we do get to see first off on the moving average is you got your 10 SMA being above the 30 MA, that's very bullish, and the price point being above the 50 SMA and very close to the 200 SMA, that again is bullish. 
Below the price point between 248 and 188, you have something called a trading action zone, where most of the positive reversals occur here. You get to see it happen a few times already. And in terms of the 80x, it suggests that this one has at least a couple of days left in terms of this movement. It's a very strong bullish trend at 45.73 on the average directional index. In terms of the William percent R, which is very similar to the relative strength index, it shows that this one is currently not overbought yet, a little bit on a neutral, but very, very, very close to the overbought. If you're checking the RSI, depending on what indicator you're using, you might see this one borderline overbought or overbought. In terms of the MACD here, you're seeing a bit of a retraction, more of a warning sign, kind of indicating that you gotta be very careful what's happening here. For all you know, it might easily drop, and this MACD is not showing strong promise, but currently at least a stable movement, which is, on its own, a pretty good thing. In terms of momentum, we're back to 153, which is a good thing. It's currently attempting to break that momentum up. Uh, it's one of the best momentums I've seen ever since this movement up here, but really it is trying to gain more momentum as you get to see here. In terms of stochastic fast and stochastic slow, they really are showing that the momentum, momentum is very strong and there's very likely a chance for it to have another leg up and that's a good thing. In terms of the moving average bands, we're able to see here that it's really going almost parabolic, which is a very good thing, another one. And in terms of the Bollinger Bands, this one is expected to trade between 324 and 55 cents. But you get to see that it's almost going on as well in a parabolic shape, and that is the best thing you kind of take care of. In terms of Fibonacci retracements, we're able to see 424 is the resistance, 648, 828, 1009, 1266, and 593, or 1593 is the resistances. The only support on the Fibonacci retracements is a 63 cents. Resistances, though, we're able to see a significant resistance at the 306, above there 398, above there around 502, going to 535, and then upwards to 622, and then 681, going higher to 763 then 818 and then finally around 954 and 1013 supports however you're able to see a very critical one very close to where it's trading around the 290 after that the 268 after that the 233 207 going downwards to the 169 and 143 comes to the question to ed what do you think is going to happen here well first i want to show you here quick some analyst recommendations so in the last 10 days, it got a $4 price target initiated from HC uh, Wingwright, and this person's success rate is 39% with an average return of 10%. So this person here shows a price target of $4 before that two months ago by Robert W. Baird. This person's success rate is around 74% with an average return of around 33%. This person reiterated $2, but two months ago, he had another $5 price target by Piper Sandler. This person's success rate is 48% with an average return of around 15%. This gives it, in the last three months, two buy, one hold, and an average price target of around 367. So currently an upside from where you're seeing. The average is 367, high is $5 and low is $2. So honestly, I do think that this there's a really strong chance that this really goes on with momentum and continues the strength in the movement. Now, it's a very high risk in its own because pharmaceuticals uh, attempt, usually have these kind of issues in general where uh, the stock itself does continuously drop after a while because of how much money they're spending. But currently, I would say this one is still going on an uptrend. That's a good thing. And really, there's momentum. But as soon as volumes kind of drop and no longer have a pulse on them, you got to be very careful. But currently, you're able even to see the trend on the momentum itself, and it looks promising. What do you think is going to happen here? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day.